Shikoku is the smallest of Japan's main islands. To use the American measurement, it's six Rhode Islands. And for the Brits out there, it's almost as big as Wales. It might seem small on a map, but as with anywhere in Japan, it's an absolute maze of towering peaks and wandering ravines. It ought to be impossible to control the whole thing, but somebody once did. A local boy named Shosokabe Motochika fought for decades to become the father of Shikoku. This is the story of how he did it, and how all of his accomplishments were undone in the blink of an eye. During the medieval period, Shikoku was divided into four provinces, giving the island the literal name of four countries. The northwest of the island was called Iyo. East of Iyo was Awa and north of Awa was the comparatively small Sanuki. The large province of Tosa occupied the rest of the island. Tosa was separated from the northern provinces by a steep and perilous mountain range. It was something of an island within an island. This made southern Shikoku a good place to keep undesirables. Criminals and imperial pretenders and witnesses to sinister events were all sent to Tosa. The authorities kept a close watch on the territory, ensuring that its people remained impoverished and under control. But during the Warring States period, any semblance of national control collapsed, and the people of Tosa were free to manage their own affairs. In this power vacuum rose seven families, the Aki, the Kirashi, the Kosokabe, the Ohira, the Tsuno, the Motoyama, and the Chosokabe. That's a lot of names, but don't worry, we're only going to focus on the last two. Our protagonist, Chosokabe Motochika, was born in 1539 at the family's ancestral seat, Oko Castle. This was a period of strife between the seven families. Motochika's grandfather had committed suicide in a battle against the Motoyama clan to avoid capture, and his father was waging a vengeful war against them. As a boy, Motochika was shy and reserved. He was derisively nicknamed the Little Princess, and his family feared such a weak child coming to lead the clan into battle. But Motochika proved himself a fearsome fighter in his first engagement against the Motoyama at the age of 21. He celebrated the victory at Wakamiya Hachimangu Shrine in what is now Kochi. Motochika claimed leadership after the death of his father, and he prosecuted a successful war against the Motoyama. A good deal of credit for Motochika's victories should go to the Ichiryo Guzoku, which was basically a militia made up of common farmers. Large groups of armed peasants were still something of a novelty in Shikoku. Within four years, Motochika reversed the losses his father had suffered and claimed victory over the Motoyama clan. This attracted the attention of the other families, like the Aki, as well as Tosa's daimyo, Ichijo Kanesara. The Ichijo clan had once been allies of the Chosokabe, but Motochika was too dangerous a threat to ignore. Over the course of the decade, Kanesara sent the other five families after Chosokabe, and he defeated them in turn. This embarrassment, coupled with Kanesara becoming embroiled in a scandal, forced the daimyo to flee the province. He raised an army in neighboring Kyushu and invaded his rightful territory. In July of 1575, Motushika's army met Kanesara's on the banks of the Shimanto River. The Battle of Shimanto River was hardly a fair fight. Motushika outnumbered the daimyo two to one and his troops were professionally trained. Kanesara made only a single attempt to cross the river before retreating. Some of the daimyo's men were picked off as they ran, but Motojika's side suffered almost no casualties. With that, the little princess had become the unquestioned master of Tosa. But Tosa was too small a prize for somebody of Motojika's ambition. Immediately after defeating Kanesara, he turned around and invaded Shikoku's other three provinces. Within five years, he had conquered Awa and Sanuki. 
Io proved a tougher nut to crack, but Motochiko was making progress. However, his success attracted the ire of Japan's most powerful warlord, Oda Nobunaga. Motochika could have Tosa and Southern Awa, the warlord said, but the other lands he had conquered should go to different lords. When Motochika refused to agree to the terms, he found himself at war with Nobunaga's retainers, like the Miyoshi clan. These were no small-time lords like the ones Motochika had defeated in his youth. The Lord of Tosa was in the toughest fight of his life. To make matters worse, Nobunaga himself was planning an invasion of the island. The fleet was due to launch on June 21st, 1582, the same day that Nobunaga was assassinated in Kyoto. Motochika made good progress in the chaos following Nobunaga's death. He spent the next few years securing his hold on the northeast and fighting his foes in the northwest. By the end of 1584, Motochika held unquestioned domain over the entire island. By this point, the succession struggles in central Japan had sorted themselves out, and Nobunaga's successor, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, demanded that Motochika hand over the territories he had just conquered. Motochika turned down the warlord, and Hideyoshi retaliated. The war was over swiftly. The ruler of Shikoku was hopelessly outnumbered. Motochika found himself defending the same castles he had attacked only years earlier. After Hideyoshi's troops besieged Ichinomiya Castle, Motochika surrendered. His tenure as ruler of Shikoku lasted approximately six months. Motochika remained a loyal vassal of Hideyoshi until the warlord died in 1598. Motochika himself died the following year at the age of 61. Their sons would fight and die together 15 years later at the siege of Osaka Castle. The Chosokabe name only lives on today via Motochika's siblings. Chosokabe Motochika is fondly remembered in what is now Kochi Prefecture. On some level, I find this strange. One should not empathize with conquerors. When territories change hands, it's always the dirt farmers and the frontline soldiers who bear the heavy load. There's nothing righteous about controlling 100% of a landmass. And yet, as someone with over 100 hours in Crusader Kings, I do get it. I've felt the thrill of seizing the territory of a neighboring lord. I've sworn when England and Scotland declared war on me simultaneously. There's no bigger rush than seeing portions of the map change color. So maybe we can put aside all the ethical questions for a moment and admit that a single person ruling over a whole island, even for a few short months, is pretty cool. <laughs>